Good morning or good afternoon. Uh, we are expecting a few more people, but I'm not going to wait anymore. Uh, I will. I'm recording this session, at least the first part. Uh, so basically, if other people want to see it later, they can. Uh, thank you uh, for being here. Uh, let me share my screen and we can start. I will be starting with a quick presentation. I'll try to go quick uh, over the first part to allow time for questions and answer. Um, so in this presentation today, we have two objectives. One, to share with you an overview of the ROOC program. Uh, that is basically, and notice we're using the word program here, uh, because it is a strategic program that include many projects with the first project uh, which is a platform that is under development at this time. So we will have an overview of uh, the Uruk uh, program and platform, and also we'll discuss the investment opportunity. So there are four major topics today, uh, but again, uh, you know, each one of them is only a few slides, so I'll be quick. Uh, we'll start with the vision of the Uruk program, and we'll introduce some general functionalities, then we will focus on the manage a project element, which is uh, the primary things that we are developing uh, in the Uruk platform and also the MVP. And then we'll have the investment clarification. Uh, if we talk about Uruk vision, uh, basically uh, we'll talk about the why Uruk, what is Uruk, how, you know, and uh, these type of statements. So let's go through it. So why is Uruk? Why Uruk? Okay, or why do we think Uruk is necessary? Uh, well, numerous research by the Project Management Institute, Oxford University, uh, IPA, which is an independent project analysis, uh, and many others, including our own work, have found that a large percentage of projects fail to achieve some or most of their objective. Uh, obviously, those who fail to achieve most of their objective uh, are often terminated but some other projects are finished and they put into service and they might be doing well as a project, as, as, uh, as a product, uh, and they could produce profit even, uh, but probably finish significantly behind schedule or over budget. So from a project management perspective, uh, failure is high. Um, now, how high, how bad it is, the severity and the rate of failure and challenges exist it might vary from one sector to another. For example, technology usually is high, infrastructure might be the worst, industrial might do better. Uh, so depend on what type of project you work on, uh, the chance of success uh, or the percentage of projects that are successful is different than other industries. Uh, I think we all could agree that uh, the, ra uh, the failure rate are real pain point to organization and affecting their overall performance. Uh, you know, I'm a bit reading here and just because these are straightforward and, uh, and this way we can go quickly. I highlighted this because the focus here is on project management, because if some of you are familiar with the success project success model that SOCAD has, we have four dimension of success. Project management is only one of them. So since we are a project management company and our focus is on project management solution, uh, they, they, we're focusing here on project management failure. However, project management failure or success, uh, right, uh, have a direct impact on all the other areas, uh, such as achieving the objective of the project and profitability and, uh, and outcome. So why is it necessary? Obviously, because there are high degree of failure. Now, some people look at the degree of failure that there are too many projects failing as a problem. Obviously, it is a problem, but we see it as a symptom for the root causes that we will mention here. One of the first root causes that we think, uh, and, and these root causes could be combined into one, and technically they are interrelated and they, they affect each other is that project management is still not recognized as a core organizational function in many organizations. 
uh, do not have a project management office or project management department or a division. So what we are seeing today is a lot of organization managing project by the accidental project management syndrome. Anybody can manage project. There is no need in their opinion for a project management office or even a project management department. Um, that uh, which means that probably there is no formal procedures or guideline. Uh, so as a result of that, obviously a large percentage of organizations do not have any organization project management system and by system here we mean the policies the procedures the guideline formalized policies procedures and guidelines and also uh, interrelated with that if they don't have product management system it's also highly likely they don't have a project management methodology uh, or what we like to call methodological approach that help them take a project from idea to closure uh, as a result of all of that, a large percentage of organization also, they don't have digital solution. So what we are saying here in the last bullet is that even when companies might have some, some element of an OPM or a methodology, they might not have a digital solution. Uh, there is an interesting post floating around on LinkedIn in the last couple of days is that the joke about, uh, we've seen many people, you know, uh, Years ago, I've been told that in one organization, they manage project by PowerPoint. Some people think Excel is on, you know, 80, you can manage 80% of the project using Excel. Uh, well, obviously, if those are simple project, maybe. Yeah, but I would love to see somebody managing uh, uh, the construction of uh, residential building, even small residential building, just with Excel. I mean, they can do it, but that doesn't mean you know, that the project would be, uh, will achieve its cost and schedule parameter. Anyway, so what we're saying here is that project management is not recognized uh, as important as finance or IT or HR and organization. As a result of that, um, obviously organizations do not have an OPM uh, or project management system. They do not have a methodological approach and most likely they do not have a digital solution. Now, what's the importance of a digital solution? Why, what's the impact of that? Obviously, uh, if you have a di digital solution, uh, that doesn't mean uh, you're good at managing project, but at least if you have the process and procedure in place, the di digital solution can help you become much more efficient in implementing your work. Plus, uh, you can maintain a lot of data and history in the organization, uh, which we will touch on later on. So what we are saying here is that we need to get organization to transform, to transform the way they do business. Uh, obviously, to transform the way they do business in terms of managing project. So one of the things we've seen is that, or we think, we believe is critical, is that integrating project management with organizational asset management. Now, this by itself, I have done presentation on, it's a big topic. Uh, but as a minimum, what we need, we cannot look at project and isolation of the organization and uh, product management and asset management. We need to have a project management and product delivery methodology. Not this I'm using here. We often talk about project management. However, project management, you know, is a necessary evil, as I say. You know, we use project management to deliver product or services, right? So our purpose is that not just to focus on management, but to focus on product delivery. This is why we talk about integration with product management and asset management. Uh, in order to do uh, the first two points that we raise here, obviously we need to have the support of uh, a comprehensive OPM system as we discussed in the previous slide. And we need to realize that project management, management is not the same in all industries. One of the frustrations that we have today, we see, it's a lot of people who are promoting agile. They think agile is apply everywhere. And obviously that's a short-sighted view. Uh, not everything apply everywhere. A project in IT versus, uh, even in IT, you know, hardware versus software, uh, new technologies, uh, sustainable technology, uh, pharmaceutical industry, uh, real estate, construction, oil and gas, you know, all of these have, have a lot of things in common in terms of managing, of how we manage them. However, there are, there are a lot of uh, 
how would I say, a lot of specialty things that we have to consider. So project management is not the same for all industries. Yes, a lot of common features, but not the same. Organization, uh, if, we, if we try to summarize all of that, uh, organization need an adaptive way to manage projects. So basically what we are saying here, we need a, pro a proper system in place and methodology in place, but that doesn't mean these things should be set in stone. They should be adaptive. Adaptive meaning in every organization, even within the same organization, an IT department might manage project differently than the HR department or the facilities department. So what we need to have is that overall policies should dictate on everybody. However, the way we manage project in each function or department or based on the type, size or complexity of the project have to be adapted and modified. And that is the core strengths of the CAMP methodology that Zucad had developed. Basically, what we're seeing here is that indirectly, we're talking about culture. We need to build a culture and organization that to recognize project management as a core organization of the function, meaning it is a, uh, as important as HR or IT or finance or marketing or sales or engineering, depend on what type of organization you work for. We have not reached that level yet. And that goes back to the earlier slide, which is the recognition. We don't have organization recognizing project management as a core organizational function. Now, what does that have all of that to have to do with Uruk? Before I continue with, you know, maybe pause. As you will see, Uruk is not just software solution. It's just basically, it's also, we are using Uruk as a mechanism or as the trigger to help us help organization change the culture of project management. So why Uruk is vital? We are not building a software tool. A lot of people, when they think of software, they think of a tool, you know, task management tool. Uh, collaboration tool. Uh, we think the market is crowded with PPM tool, project portfolio management tool. What we are building is an innovative and versatile solution. Now, what do we mean by that? That means this, what we are building is that there is a systems in place, a process method, okay, that can we can use to guide the organization of how to manage project, assuming some of, you know, and which could be ideal for organization who do not have a lot of experience in project management, small, medium uh, companies, they might have some idea or they manage project today by, by ad hoc, by being, you know, uh, just jump from idea to implementation uh, without a structure or a method, right? We are providing all of that. So it's not just said, oh, we are giving you, you know, think of this maybe the best example I can give you an MS project. MS project or Primavera are a very powerful tool for scheduling and maybe you can use them for other things as well. However, you have to build everything. Yeah. Uh, in this case, in Uruk, we are even giving a, uh, a basic schedule, the, the essential skeleton schedule. We are also given it within Uruk and we can integrate with it. And, and I think we can see that later as well. Uh, so basically, we need the versatile solution that would allow organization to adopt it quickly and at minimal initial investment. What do we mean by this? If an organization accepts our solution with minimum or minimum uh, or negligible modification, you know, upon the decision to purchase, within hours or days, they could be using it. Now, imagine if an organization today want to implement a PMO, how many months and uh, time and cost is involved? With our solution, that could be almost zero time, almost. I mean, it could be hours or days. Uh, and if there even if some customization is required, maybe, uh, you know, maybe a week or two. So within that very short period of time, uh, the organization can start implementing uh, using the system and almost with zero cost. So their only cost would be the subscription cost that they will pay over time. And whenever they're not happy with the solution, they can stop at any time. So they don't have to invest a million dollars in building a PMO and at the end, throw it away, right? They can start and maybe we'll even give them some uh, uh, freebie where they can use it for a month or two. And if they're happy, they will continue with it. So technically, technically, uh, almost no risk whatsoever, except the risk of their time uh, to try and to experiment with what we offer them. 
so what we want is also a solution. Remember, we talk about building, uh, uh, helping with the culture, you know, uh, embedding a project leadership, project uh, culture, uh, to help them visualize and leading project concept to success. Yeah, and and most importantly, is that can be used in all domain in all project, regardless of type, size, or complexity. So once again, if organization accept our solution with minimal customization, it means they are getting a PMO in a box ready to go upon subscription. Since we are providing a solution with OPM system, inclusive of tailored method and governance structure. Sorry for reading this, but that obviously just to reinforce what I have been saying. Obviously that means a lot of savings. How can a root help in leading transformation of organization? Uh, or changing the way they manage project? Well, by providing built and tailored method, what does that mean is that if you work, let's say in a marketing, uh, obviously the MVP will not have all the tailored method, but over time we will have different tailored methods. So we could have a marketing project, right? So if you are an organization, you wanna work on a marketing project, we have a method for you already there. You can go take it and you can still modify it. Right, so it's not going to be set in stone. Said use this, uh, you know. Obviously, we're not experts in everything. Uh, uh, we uh, we will we can work with an organization to tailor the method further if if needed. So no need to reinvent the wheel. Include processes, method, educational content, tutorial, um, case studies, ebooks. We will be sharing a lot of that information, um, and. Uh, will also include uh, down the road post MVP, a lot of uh, modules for cost estimating, cost control, quality, risk, uh, resource management, uh, change management, you name it. So basically it can become, it will become a comprehensive project management solution that include as far as we can in terms of managing the project. So, but you know, obviously there is a significant level of detail that could be technical work. We're not getting into that. We're just getting into the management. So obviously we're not gonna go and to help people learn how to manage or how to do engineering or construction or coding or, right? Our focus is on managing, uh, managing and delivering the product. Now, of course, that include usually when we talk about that, that include project management processes. We talk about stage management processes, and we talk about technical product specific uh, processes. Yeah, that's the, that product technical um, specialization. Obviously, we cannot include that in the rook. Everything else will be there. So once again, PM on the box. Uh, so why do we think Rook is the right solution? Uh, uh, we are confident because we are confident based on our experience in the past uh, uh, with organization with high level of maturity that in project management that we can save 10, 20% or more in the product delivery mechanism. In addition, the organization can get their product to market faster and to higher standard, which would enhance their competitiveness and maximize shareholder value. Also, a rook can provide a mechanism to enable the proper governance, transparency, and real-time reporting. I think with this, uh, so, sorry, uh, yeah, I jumped too fast. Uh, with this, uh, with this last slide, we conclude the first section, which is more about the vision of a rook. Now I'm going to shift quickly to uh, rook functionalities. The main one, uh, and for those who are familiar with CAMP, Rook is definitely more than CAMP. It will have four major, four elements. Two of them we consider major, which is a managing a project element, which is based on CAMP and much more, uh, which we will do later. We have the managing the portfolio. These are the major project management element. Of course, those need additional information, additional element, which is one about engaging with the community and building a community of practice, and then the administrative part. Uh, quickly speaking, managing the portfolio, and I'm not going to go through the detail explaining this here. Uh, at this time, we envision seven what we call functional center, 
uh, one that would include the governance information, another one for project record history, project files, the history, the capture lesson learned, performance reporting, resource management, project pipeline, and portfolio control. These are the major elements that will be in the portfolio management and that those will be applicable to the whole organization. However, when we do reporting and dashboarding and portfolio control and performance reporting, we can zoom in on a branch or a division or even a program. So let's say when we build our project in the, in, in the system and we decide that uh, these projects are part of a program, we can put a, uh, an identifier there that this is part of a program. So when we wanna run report, we can run report for the program only or run report for a specific division or a branch or the whole organization. And of course, that's the same thing with dashboarding and project files and lessons learned. Uh, all of that could be uh, could be generated for the whole organization or only a division or program. And usually, the portfolio management unit will be managed by what we call uh, sorry, the portfolio management uh, will be managed by what we are calling a project management unit. And we're using the term unit here because some organization could have PMO, some organization could have project management department or division. So unit is generic to represent all of these. The managing a project is based on CAMP for the methodology and also have uh, seven major center, but the last center technically could be many more. Uh, uh, starting the project, working the project. Uh, so what I will be uh, doing here Uh, I'm looking to because there is a chat. I, I will answer the chat in a second. Uh, so basically what we have here is a seven, center, seven uh, functional center and I'll quickly go over each one of them very quickly. Uh, and uh, the question, could you please advise whether your solution, Rook platform has been implemented in construction industry so far? Obviously uh, uh, my answer to this is no because we are still under development. Uh, so basically, uh, we are developing the platform right now for summer release. Uh, so it hasn't been implemented anywhere yet uh, as a software. In terms of the methodology itself, uh, it's highly relevant to the construction and uh, industry. Uh, and, my, and my personal background come from construction and, and engineering oil and gas. Uh, and so basically a lot of what, uh, what's here come from my own experience uh, in these type of industries. Uh, in terms of integrating with the ERPs, uh, definitely down the road, it will, uh, we will have many integration uh, with the ERPs, uh, with Microsoft Project, with uh, Primavera, uh, and with other software solution that could be uh, more in depth. For example, in the construction industry, there is a lot of software solution that for the actual construction documentation, right? That's a huge area. Uh, uh, Rook would focus on managing the construction, but might integrate with some of those solution uh, for the further detail. Okay, uh, so how do we manage project uh, in Rook? And there are supporting element I had touched on, and that's actually uh, quickly here to talk about the release schedule. So that related to the question, uh, summer 2021, uh, we expect the minimum viable product will be out in the market uh, with a focus on managing project element. And we will be using a generic uh, project schedule and a generic project as the first tailored method we use out there. And then immediately after that, we'll start doing essential enhancement by collecting feedback from our community and market, and we complete other section. And uh, I'm not gonna go through the rest, it's just basically this will be ongoing. We expect the development to get the full vision uh, takes, might, takes about two years from now. Okay, uh, managing a project is based on camp as we've mentioned, and this is the standard model uh, of a full project life cycle going from concept all the way to closure, including operational readiness. Uh, obviously, this is a standard model, which means we will use this model as a starting point to develop the different tailored method uh, that would be built into the system. So basically, as we mentioned earlier, uh, 
you want to work on marketing project, if we have built that method in there, you will go and say, ah, there is already a method to help me manage a marketing project. Let me take a look at it. Uh, and it might look good enough to use it as is, or maybe it would require some minor modification, which obviously you can do. Uh, if we continue with uh, basically, I'm just gonna highlight some slide here and skip some of the other slide, or I mean, have them here just for reference. Uh, ideally, and this is one of the significant cost savings I think that organization can face. So let's say we are a big company, not a big, by big company, we don't mean conglomerate. Yeah, I mean, obviously, uh, you know, 100 employees, 200, 500 employees, uh, or even 50 employees. Yeah. And let's say uh, uh, we want to work on, we accepted a rook to manage all our project regardless of what domain. And here I am a marketing person. I want to come and manage a marketing project. Uh, or I'm an IT person, or I'm a facility guy. Uh, so when I go into the system, first I can find uh, in the system if there is a similar project from the record or you notice I put that orange uh, arrow that could be done at the end. Uh, but primarily what I will be doing, I'm going to be focusing on project type and class Do, because a root, the tailored method are linked to a specific project type as you can see on the left here. Uh, for example, facilities project, digital or technology, media, humanitarian, medical, government admin, and of course the list can go on. I just put this as an example. In terms of project classification, we have five classification, micro project, small, simple project, medium, moderate, large, complex, and mega project. So when we start a new project, I'm a project manager or I'm a project, uh, whatever title I have in the organization. And I was asked to, uh, to do a project, a hackathon. Uh, organize a hackathon or organize a conference, right? Uh, so based on the information I know, and depend how, how long uh, the organization has been using Rook uh, or have been using project management, uh, said, okay, look, do we have something in the system for this type of project? Let's say, do we have event management methodology? And uh, if yes, I'll select it. Okay, and I move on and to go start working on the project. However, if I don't, okay, uh, down the road, not immediately uh, upon release, we will have a feature in the system where you can go in and answer a few questions. And the system, which is a rook, will give you a recommendation on what methodology to use. And of course, if you accept it, you go uh, here to, to the right uh, from the middle. You take the recommendation or the method and you go and you start working. However, let's say you are an experienced project manager said, look, you know, I don't like what Rook had recommended for me. Uh, I, I have reason to justify uh, using something else or modifying it. In that case, uh, we do ask that, you know, if you are the project manager, request permission. Because if you want to deviate, obviously we want to know why. I mean, and, and I'm talking about Sukad here, I'm talking about you as a company, should know why, why would the tailored method, assuming we have it, is not good enough for you, for that project? Uh, and is it something that maybe the project manager trying to take shortcut and bypass the system, which is not good? Uh, or is there a justification? If there a justification, then it's important to know because maybe we need to modify the tailored method or maybe create a new tailored method altogether, right? So that option exists whenever we wanna start a project. Then when we manage project, uh, obviously this is too detailed to describe here, but technically if you look at this, you can see boxes in a way. Each box is a stage of the project and to manage a project, we need to go, and this is what we call the work in the project functional center. We go stage by stage. Now, if the project is large enough, Within this stage, we also have to use uh, this concept, which is the process group concept from ISO and, and PMBAC. Uh, we authorize, we plan management, we plan detail, we implement, and we close. And of course, in the middle, we have control that touching all of these areas. Now, within a stage, technically what we are doing, I mean, the, the, the previous slide talked about how we manage the stage. Now, what is the work of the stage? 
Well, every stage is there to produce a stage deliverable. And that stage deliverable have to be submitted to a decision at gate, reviewed at the gate. And then if management, uh, they can require a modification to that deliverable, or they can reject it, or they can accept it. And they can decide on what to do next. So assuming the stage deliverable is done to their standard, they can decide whether to continue the project or stop the project. That's the idea behind stage gate. We also need to manage tasks. So the way we're gonna do that is that uh, we'll integrate with project online. We'll provide a schedule like this as a sample uh, in there we, for that tailored method. So every tailored method will have a schedule associated with it. And then uh, when the team start, they can link to MS project to download the schedule into Uruk. So they will go online, they will provide integrate, we will provide the integration. So that one of the integration I was talking about earlier uh, to integrate with project online, uh, and that will be in the MVP, uh, and to download and link. Now, when we download a link, right, that is that will give us a test list. So basically, everything you see here, uh, the lowest level of uh, the activity on the WB on the schedule, uh, it become a task in a group. So we will have uh, a list of tasks by stage. And of course, the project manager can go in and modify these tasks uh, and end up with an, a formal task list. Not, not necessarily for the whole project, it could be stage by stage, right? So we could do this integration with every stage uh, because obviously we, uh, we don't have all the detail for later stages, but for the upcoming stage, we should have plenty of detail. Then of course, once we do that, we assign to team members uh, these tasks. And this way, every team, uh, every task would have an assignment to a person uh, to do the work. Now, in Uruk, we also have funding the project, which could be at two different points. Uh, again, I'm not. Th this is not going to be a detailed description of Uruk or uh, or uh, the uh, camp methodology. Uh, by the way, I mean, obviously, there are a lot of videos we have on, on camp itself, which is a, a core knowledge foundation for Rook. It's on our YouTube channels. So there are a lot of description, every stage, every phase, uh, the stage gate, the funding. Uh, there are a lot of details on our YouTube channel. We also assess performance, cost and schedule, change management, quality, risk, forecast. All of these will be in there and there will be many supporting function in the system. Uh, for example, down the road, we will have a module for risk management, an issue management, change management, uh, stakeholder management, uh, resource, uh, health and safety, you name it. And then uh, toward the end, of course, we have to close the project and there will be a center for that. Now I'm gonna take five minutes to talk about the investment clarification and that will give us about 15 minutes for questions and answer. Uh, let me read this, what I call the series second pitch. For organizations that deliver value through projects and have problem or face challenges in completing project within the costs and schedule targets, we are building the Aruk platform, a comprehensive, versatile and cloud-based solution for the management of any project regardless of industry, type, size, or complexity. So it's a highly comprehensive solution. Consequently, these organizations can complete their project and deliver their product to market faster at lower cost and higher standard, ultimately maximizing shareholder value and enabling market leadership. Obviously, if they can do it better and faster than their competitor, it become a competitive advantage. Now, in terms of investment, uh, it's an equity crowdfunding campaign, and there are some reward associated, depend on how much you invest, there are some reward that goes with that. Now, for those who are not familiar with equity crowdfunding, and when they hear the term crowdfunding, they think of reward base, you know, like those campaign to promote a cause, usually those are, you are donating money, you are giving money away, and to support the cause, to support a, a product, a consumer product. And usually you can get maybe a t-shirt or a small gift, or you can get that product at discount. We are business to business. That type of methodology or crowdfunding doesn't work for us. 
ours is equity, which means you get to own shares in the company. So you're a partner. Uh, the way we do it, the way crowdfunding does it, and this is not something we invented, this is highly regulated by the US government, is that uh, uh, those investing into our campaign, uh, they will get contracts called convertible notes or some people call it convertible debt. So technically it's like you are loaning us money, uh, which is at a point in time in the future, usually either at the maturity, which means two years, at the end of two years, or if we have a major investment before that, that help us to get valuation because the idea we use convertible note right now because we don't have a formal valuation of the company because they cannot do proper valuation until you hit the market and you start selling. Uh, so a convertible note are usually designed for a given period of time uh, or a trigger. A trigger could mean, as I mentioned, that somebody come and invest half, half a million dollars. And that might mean that we need to do a valuation for the company, which means pricing the shares, because right now we don't have a price per share. At that point on time, you have a choice as, a, as a someone who contributed to the equity crowdfunding campaign. You have a choice of either taking your money back with interest, okay, which is set at 5%, uh, or convert your money with interest converted into share based on the uh, on the share value that is determined at that time, at the time of the trigger or at the time of maturity. Uh, so which mean obviously you can, uh, if you don't like to continue down the road, you're not happy, uh, you know, at the trigger or maturity, you can take your money back with interest. Okay. Uh, however, of course, uh, we have to say that uh, investing in startup is has risk involved with it. Obviously, if we fail, uh, we all lose, but we, I assure you we're putting a lot, of, I'm personally putting a lot of my own money into this in time. Uh, and uh, we are highly confident of the success. Uh, now, what can you invest? Some people think, oh, investor, I have to be you know, a rich person. No, uh, you can invest as little as $100 or the maximum allowed by government is $107,000. Uh, now, for those in the USA, uh, there is something here called the uh, individual retirement account. And this is usually money that is locked in, in an investment account somewhere where usually you cannot touch it until you retire or at least until you're 59 and a half years old. If you touch it before that, you have to pay penalty. So that money, you know, obviously, if you are uh, in the 30s or 40s or even 50s, that money is sitting there and you cannot touch it without paying tax and penalty. So there, there is a way that we can actually, instead of investing that into a stock market or a mutual fund, you can divert some of that through something called Alto IRA. You can convert some of that to that uh, platform and you can invest from that money. So this is money saved for you for the future. Instead of investing into you know, the stock market, you can invest it into startup or at least some of it. Uh, I, for example, personally, I have diverted about 25% of my IRA. I have, uh, you know, as you can see that I'm an old guy. Uh, so I have a lot of money saved over the years and, uh, and I cannot touch it. So I have just transferred 25% of my IRA to invest into startup, including Sukkot. Uh, investing in startup requires risk tolerance, as we mentioned. Uh, and sometimes people ask us about, oh, well, you know, because they think of traditional investing in stock market, what dividends? Uh, in, in startup, there is no dividend usually, uh, because uh, dividend is a form of profit distribution. And in a startup, you want all that profit. And obviously, we're raising funds. So the last thing we want to do is give out money. Uh, so the idea is that, you know, uh, all the profit you want to reinvest into the company to scale and to grow. And usually when people invest in the startup, they are investing for that exit, what they call the exit. Yeah? And the exit could be in the form of merger and acquisition. Somebody could come and buy us out. Or if we decide not to sell, uh, obviously once we mature enough, we can do initial public offering, which means we go onto the stock market and now uh, people can, uh, you can start selling your stocks, hopefully at 10, 20, 30 times of what you invested. 
where are we? Uh, we already, uh, in terms of money, we already have enough money. We have allocated enough money to finish the MVP. So we want to make sure we have the fund to secure the MVP. And we made, it, made that decision last year before we even started the development. We want to make sure that money is secure uh, in case the fundraising is not successful, in case we cannot raise any other money. We want to make sure we get the MVP out. So that money is secure and locked and has nothing to do with this crowdfunding campaign. Uh, this crowdfunding campaign uh, is we need it in order for us to build a strong team to take the product to market uh, and, and continue development after the MVP. All right, so we don't stop. Uh, obviously, if we don't have fund, we do the MVP and we'll have to stop and we'll try to sell until we generate enough revenue to continue building. Uh, that doesn't make good sense. So we want to continue. And that's the reason we're raising fund through the WeFunder crowdfunding campaign. Uh, and uh, what we are looking for, I mean, down the road, we want to raise a million dollars. But immediately, we have set an initial target of 150000 and ideally, we like to reach 300,000 uh, plus. And that will give us enough money uh, to go to market and spend and have uh, about six months into the market, which would allow us to do a proper valuation for the company and maybe get more funding from angel investors and other. And here, what I'm saying, we essentially reach 150. Technically, we are. Uh, uh, we are expecting an investment to come in uh, the next couple of days. With that investment that's coming in, we will be just at $150,000. So technically, we achieved our initial target. Uh, and now we still have about five weeks uh, to continue uh, to raise, to try to reach $300,000. Uh, this was as of two days ago. So we were about uh, 13,000 short. This is 136, yeah, 100, about $13,100 short. Uh, <clears throat> we are expecting 15,000 to come in at any point, any point in time. There was some technical error with one of the investors we're trying to fix. So that will put us, put us just above 150, which means we have achieved our goal of 150. Uh, and that is uh, that mean uh, our campaign is successful. However, as I mentioned, we, we, uh, it will stay open. The campaign will stay open until 30 April uh, and we'll try to double that amount in the next five weeks. Thank you.